Antonio Manuel Lagdamel for his statement. And now I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Lebanon to deliver a statement on behalf of the Arab group. You have the floor, madam. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have the honor to deliver this statement on behalf of the Arab group. The Arab group also associates itself to the uh, statement of the NAM. Mr. Chair, at the outset, the Arab group would like to congratulate you on chairing the Disarmament Commission. We also congratulate Jamaica and Hungary for chairing the two working groups. The Arab group reaffirms its cooperation with you and with the members of the Bureau as well as with the two presidents of the working groups in order to guarantee the success of the third and final session of the Commission, considering the importance of this Commission as an international and UN uh, forum that is part and parcel of the UN disarmament structure, which aims at discussing all issues pertaining to disarmament according to the mandate of the first special GA session on disarmament of 1978. The Arab group reaffirms that achieving peace, stability, and security in the world cannot be achieved with the presence of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction. Hence, the need to eliminate these weapons irreversibly under international monitoring and verification, and also the need to harness all the material and human potential of these inhumane weapons to serve development, especially in light of the increase of military expenditures to develop nuclear weapons, which leads to further international tensions. The Arab group reaffirms its deep concern over the failure to achieve any tangible progress in nuclear disarmament and the repeated failures to implement the second decisions of the review conference that was adopted in 1995, as well as the 13 measures that have been agreed upon by the 2000 Review Conference, in addition to the plan of action included in the uh, outcome document of the 2010 Review Conference. Indeed, nuclear weapons have been clearly avoiding to adopt any timelines to implement their international commitments pertaining to the elimination of nuclear weapons while focusing increasingly on reducing nuclear threats. In this context, and in line of the, uh, or, or, in, in, or considering the non implementation of the 1995 decision on the Middle East and the failure of the 2010 review conference, the Arab group considers that the responsibility to establish a zone free from nuclear uh, weapons and all weapons of mass destruction in the Middle East is a collective responsibility. The decision of 1995 on the Middle East is part and parcel of the indefinite extension of the treaty. Therefore, non, the non-implementation of one of the pillars of this deal threatens the other components of the deal and casts doubt on its legality. The Arab group reaffirms that the 1995 resolution remains valid until fully implemented and until we implement all its objectives. The Arab group reaffirms that it has implemented its share of, uh, of responsibility regarding the creation of a zone free of nuclear weapons in the Middle East. 
The other parties have now to live up to their commitments. Otherwise, they will be jeopardizing the credibility and sustainability of the NPT and also threatening the disarmament regime on the international and regional levels. All the Arab states have adhered to, to the NPT and have subjected all their nuclear facilities to the safeguards regime of the IAEA. While Israel did not do that so far, despite all the demands and the UN resolutions in this regard. The Arab group would like to recall that the General Assembly had adopted Resolution 73-546, which asked the Secretary General to convene a conference to discuss a binding treaty on the creation of a zone free of nuclear weapons and other WMDs in the Middle East, based on a consensus and on the free will of the member states. Knowing that res the resolution of 1995 should be the reference for that conference. In this context, the Arab group welcomes the, con the convening of the three sessions of that conference, chaired by the Kingdom of Jordan in 2019, the State of Kuwait in 2021, and the Republic of Lebanon in 2022, and with the participation of all the members of the conference except Israel. The Arab group calls on all the members of the conference to positively contribute to reach a binding treaty on creating this free zone. In this context, the Arab group asked the first working group on nuclear disarmament to support the regional and international efforts in order to create this zone free of nuclear weapons in the Middle East and to include that in their final recommendations, including calling Israel to join the conference on creating the, uh, this free zone without any preconditions and subjecting all their nuclear facilities and activities to the IAEA safeguards regime. Mr. Chair, the failure of the two review conferences of the NPT and the fact that nuclear states are not living up to their commitments in nuclear disarmament put the international community in front of an increased responsibility. Indeed, the international community has to accelerate uh, their efforts in order to fully eliminate nuclear weapons. The Arab group reaffirms the need to promote to promote international efforts aiming at guaranteeing the success of the 11th Review Conference to reach a final document that would be consensual and comprehensive and which would reflect the commitment of all states to implement that treaty and what has been agreed upon in previous review conferences, especially with regards to nuclear disarmament and achieving the universality of that treaty while creating the free zone in the Middle East. The Arab group will pursue its efforts along with the other countries on the regional and international levels to promote the nuclear disarmament diplom diplomacy and non-proliferation. In 2017, we have witnessed a historical unprecedented development. Indeed, we have reached the first legally binding instrument prohibiting nuclear weapons, creating, besides the legal commitment, a new source of customary law, organizing disarmament, and considering nuclear weapons as inhumane weapons, the acquisition and use of which, or even threatening using them, goes against international law and humanitarian law. These weapons also directly threaten international peace and security. This has been reaffirmed by the first meeting of the state's parties to the NPT. The Arab group reaffirms the importance it attaches to supporting all the legal instruments aiming at reinforcing the nuclear disarmament regime, including the CTBT, 
which will play an important role upon its entry into force. We have to support the universality of this treaty to reinforce nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation by monitoring nuclear experiments and preventing the quantitative and qualitative development of nuclear weapons. The Arab group also reaffirms the need to implement measure number 10 of the plan of action adopted by the 2010 review conference. This procedure highlights the special responsibility of nuclear weapons in ratifying the CTBT and the fact that all, all countries haven't adhered yet to the CTBT and which have nuclear facilities that are not subjected to the safeguards regime to ratify this treaty and to achieve balance in the Middle East, especially that if these parties remain outside the legal framework created by the NPT, would undermine the efficiency of the non-proliferation and disarmament regimes. The Arab group also calls for an immediate engagement in negotiations to reach a legally binding instrument that would provide security guarantees for non-nuclear weapons pertaining to the use or threat of use of nuclear weapons in all circumstances, knowing that these safeguards are not an alternative to a full nuclear disarmament. The Arab group hope that the current session will come up with clear recommendations and outcomes under the item on nuclear disarmament. This depends on the will of the political will of the nuclear weapons, which have ad avoided adopting recommendations in that regard, despite the consultative nature of this forum. Mr. Chair, with regards to the item on confidence building to prevent arms race in the outer space, the Arab group reaffirms the need for any results adopted by the Commission to be consistent with the following principles. First, outer space is a public commodity and it's a common heritage of humanity. Therefore, any human activities in the outer space should be dealt with in the different mandated frameworks in the, Middle, in the, in the United Nations in order to guarantee the universality of these principles and to guarantee non-discrimination. Second, any effort to organize the uses of outer space should aim at using outer space to the benefit of all countries and peoples. Therefore, we should respect the inalienable right of all states to use outer space for objectives other than weaponization. Third, the outer space should remain free from conflicts, weapons race, and weaponization. It should be limited to, use, uh, to peaceful usages until we reach a legally binding treaty that is universal and verifiable. Therefore, we should prevent the proliferation of any weapons in the outer space for defensive uh, reasons or for launching attacks, and we should also prevent using any outer space facilities for non-peaceful usages. For we should reinforce technology transfer in outer space, and we should also work on technical cooperation and providing technical assistance and capacity building support to the developing countries. The Arab group looks forward to achieving a successful outcome of the, uh, of the works of the open-ended working group on the use of outer space. And we hope that they will, use, uh, they will adopt consensual decisions, taking into account the concerns of all states. We are aware of the importance of voluntary measures in this regard to limit threats in outer space. While we cannot consider that these measures are an alternative to adopting a legally binding international instrument in that regard. To conclude, the Arab group welcomes all the international efforts aiming at developing a legally binding instrument to prevent arms race in the outer space, including the intergovernmental group of experts created 
on the resolution 250-77, which we are looking forward to contributing to. This represents an important step forward, and thank you. I think the distinguished representative of Lebanon, Charles Deferro.